In this lesson, we'll be looking at the concept of prop types for your React components. And so far, we have looked at components and props. Here we have this button component, which receives a class name and children prop. And over here in the pricing card component, we use the button component. And over here in app.gsx, we also use the pricing card components in a rendering list and everything seems to work fine but we have a problem well a potential problem and the problem here is that we haven't typed our props what do i mean by this well first let me run my development server and when i say we haven't typed our props now when we come to button.gsx here we are expecting a class name prop and a children prop but here in this pricing card component, here we have the children, which in this case is just the text, and then we have the class name prop. But what if we used a number as this class name prop? Let's use 50. Here we expected it to be a string because that is the string that we are going to concatenate to this other string. But here we're using a number. And on the UI, you can see that our buttons no longer look the same. But if you go to the console, there is no error telling us that the button component expected a class class name prop with a string. That is because we haven't typed our props. So React doesn't know that it expects a string. But if React knew, then React can tell us, uh oh, that prop should actually be a string and not a number. So this is where defining prop types for your components can be helpful because they help you catch errors faster, debug your application faster, especially during development. Now, how do you define prop types? Well, there are a lot of ways in the React world to do that. My favorite way is using TypeScript. TypeScript allows you to define your props in so many simple and advanced ways. But later on in this course, we're going to look at TypeScript and React. But what I'm going to show you today is this way, which is using the prop types npm package. So the first thing we want to do is to install this package. First, I'm going to queue my development server. I'm using Control C on my Mac. It might be a different command for you if you're on Windows or something else so here I'm going to run npm install prop types you can see the command for it here I don't need to use this save option because it's automatically saving my package.json so when that is installed if you go to package.json you can see prop types here with the version that is installed all right now that I have that I can run my development server again in some cases you might not need to stop your development server before you install some packages but I'm just doing that so that you can follow along now that we have this in this button component first thing i'm going to do is import prop types and after importing it i'm going to remove this export defaults from here and i'm going to put it at the end here export default button and the reason why i'm putting this export default at the bottom is because before i export this button component i want to modify the prop types property of the button component if i didn't need to modify this then i can have my export default right here which i often do when i'm working with typescript but because i want to modify this using the prop types library then i have to export just after modifying it and here in the documentation of prop types you can see the different types of values that you can declare for your props so for this i can say class name should be a string and i do that using the prop types library so prop types dot string and also for the children prop which this component expects i want to have prop types dot node so here node refers to number string elements or an array if you wanted your children to be specifically an element you can use prop types dot element but in this case i'm using node because as you can see with this pricing card a string here is the children a children can also be an element like this but in this case it's a string so because the children can be anything i use prop types dot node now coming back here if you remember i'm using a number for the class name now let's check the console you see we now have an error invalid prop class name of type number supplied to button expected string so for our button components we declared or defined whatever you want to call it that we want a string or we expect a string for the class name property. But if I should change this to a string, that error now goes away when I refresh because it is now a string and it satisfies my prop types declaration. Well, let me take this back to the string it was before, which is using my styles module with the card button class as key. Now let's see the children also. If I should remove 
these children here and let's just say i have button button there is no children you see i'm not getting any error here we said that our button component should expect a children prop but even when i don't pass a children in this component i don't get any error this is because i have not yet defined that that prop should be required by default the prop is optional but if i come here now and i add is required it makes that prop required and now we get an error it says the prop children is marked as required in button but its value is undefined because i am not passing children here but once i pass children back here if you come back here and you refresh you see our console is now empty because we have passed children which we have already defined is required so you can see how prop types allows you to in a way document your components by documenting the prop types and this can save you a whole lot when building because when something is breaking you can get those nice error messages that tells you oh you provided a number here instead of a string and that can help you figure out what's going on faster another thing to know with prop types is that these warnings only appear during development so if i should host this application which i'm going to do later on in this course if i host this application and I'm passing the wrong prop types, I'm not going to get those errors in the console. In fact, even if I have those prop types errors here, if I try to build my application, that is prepare my application for hosting, don't worry, I'm going to cover more on this later in this course. If I try to prepare this application for hosting, let's say in this pricing card, I pass 50, a number which we did earlier, and now I try to run npm run build, which should build this application, prepare it for hosting. If I run it, you see, the build is successful even if i passed a wrong type for this value here so this prop types documentation or definitions only runs during development so you should take note of that and the different ways you can use this prop types library for example you can even construct a strict shape like this you can always refer to this documentation when using the prop types library if you remember in pricing card we expect all of these properties like this but instead what we can do is that we can expect the properties in this way so we just say pricing card and then we just have card here as the prop remember again i'm going to take this export default from here and i'm going to put it here export default pricing card and then here i can now have pricing card dot prop types remember this prop types is a small p then here i can say card and for this card i can now use this prop types dot exact so prop types dot exact and then i'm going to pass an object here where i have my label price duration image image alt benefit the label is going to be a prop types dot string and it should be required the price is also prop types dot string and is required same thing for the duration except that the duration is not required the duration is optional if you remember this first card doesn't have a duration but this second card has a duration and this third card doesn't have a duration so we can leave this one as optional for the image this is going to be a string and required this is also going to be a string and required and for the benefits i can have prop types dot array of and you can see that here it says an array of a certain type for the benefits i expect an array of strings so i can say array off and then i can also have prop types dot string and i can also put that this array is required um one thing i'm forgetting to do is import my prop types and now that i have this i can come to app.gsx and here instead of passing all these properties individually i can just pass the card prop and i can pass this card object that comes from looping through the cards that we have here and here in this pricing card i'm now going to destructure this card so this is going to be a card object and then i can destructure the label price duration image image alt and benefits and now if we come here great we now have everything working but now let's check our console well everything seems perfect so we don't have any prop errors but now let's say i made this duration required now we're going to get an error it says that the prop card dot duration is marked as required in pricing card but its value is undefined and where is this undefined coming from this undefined is coming from the fact that 
this first card and this third card does not have a duration property now let's say i just copy this duration property from here and i put it here and i put it here now if i should refresh we don't get any errors so i'm just showing you how the is required property work so now i can come back and i can say well the duration should not be required the label is required price is required image is required image alt is required the benefit should be an array of strings so if i come here now maybe one of the benefits i put a boolean like true we now get an error failed prop type invalid prop card dot benefits one you see it even shows us which of the benefits actually has an error and one because index starts from zero one means the second item you see of type boolean supply to pricing card and it expected string so there are different structures arrays or objects that you can declare for your prop types also here we are using exact and exact here is a strict shape so if i should introduce an extra property let's say i introduce a property like decode <laughs> and i pass a string like hello now decode is going to be passed here to the card prop if i should come here now you're going to see i'm going to get an error invalid prop card key decode supplied to pricing card it even goes for that to show us what the bad object is and then it goes to show us what the expected keys are but if i should come to pricing card let's go back to prop types here instead of using exact if i should use shape shape means well i'd like it to take this shape but you can use extra properties now if i should refresh no errors but let me go back to exact because that is what i want for my use case and i can come here and remove the decode property one more thing i forgot to add is that adding prop types to your components can actually help you in your code editor also this depends on your code editor in my case i'm using vs code now let's say i remove this class name from this prop types over here in pricing card if i try to enter class name you see it shows me a suggestion but it says that the class name can be of any type but if i come to this button now and i add this prop types dot string if i come back here and i'm trying to type class name you see it shows me class name but now it shows me that class name can either be a string it can be null or it can be undefined and the reason why there is also null and undefined is because in my prop types i didn't make this property required so if it is not required it means that property can also be null or it can be undefined but if i put is required here then coming back here if i'm typing class name you see the suggestion i get is that this property is expected to be of the string type so depending on your code editor you can get correct suggestions like this so you know the right data type to pass to different props and this also works with object structures for example here we created this object which is a card and then it has all these properties here now if i should come to app.gsx and let's say i'm trying to enter card you see that it shows me card here and this is the structure here it has label price duration image image alt and benefits and then we see this or null or undefined and that is again because we didn't make the whole object is required so now that i make this whole object required if i come back here and i'm entering card you see now i get required here so required and then i have this object structure so using the prop types library you can declare your props in different ways here you can declare your prop to be a function you can declare your prop to be of any type you can even declare your prop to be of a custom prop where you create your own custom prop checker you do some checks and if that prop doesn't match that expected type it would return an error so you can do a lot here and i recommend that you go through this prop types documentation i'll also leave a link in the video description you can check this out to see the different structures you can create and that's it for this lesson in the next lesson we're going to look at how to handle events in our components